A very good evening aspirants. Welcome to the Hindu newspaper analysis brought to you by Shankar Rai's Academy for the date 7th of January 2022. So these are the list of news articles chosen for today's discussion. If you can see we have chosen six different articles from different pages of a newspaper. So without wasting much time now let us move on to the first news article discussion. This news article is about the recent development by Ministry of Civil Aviation which is nothing but MCA to other ministries regarding drones. See MCA has asked to use drones effectively in every sector by every ministry. So today we are going to see in brief about drones, its applications and effects taken by Indian government in this regard. Now what are drones? See drone is a flying robot. It is an airborne system or an aircraft or an aerial vehicle. Formally, it is also known as unmanned aerial vehicle UAVs or unmanned aircraft systems UASS. See, they can be remotely controlled or it can also fly autonomously through software controlled flight plans in their embedded systems. Simply we can say it is a pilotless aircraft as you can see in these representations. Now, these drones offer tremendous benefits to almost all sectors of the economy because they could be used for many purposes. So let us see these applications briefly. First of all, it could be used for aerial surveillance because it provides real-time surveillance. So MCA which is nothing but the Ministry of Civil Aviation asked Ministry of Home Affairs to use them for surveillance, situational analysis, crime control, VVIP security, disaster management, etc. Due to this use, it could also be used for anti-poaching actions, for monitoring of forests and wildlife, evidence gathering, etc. by the Ministry of Environment as well. Second thing is, particularly it could be used in disaster relief because if sensors are added to the drone, it can be used to help to locate and save life when there is a natural disaster. Third thing is, it also finds use in defense sector because drones used in defense have complex system that includes ground stations, satellite connectivity and sometimes it also has onboard weapons etc. So drones can be deployed for combat, for communication in remote areas, counter drone solutions etc. Fourth important thing is drones can also be used to gather and deliver medical samples, supplies and medicine to remote areas or unreached areas in a disaster zone. So it provides a massive benefit in pandemic times and can be used for these purposes on a large scale by the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. Actually already the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare has launched iDrone. This is a drone based vaccine delivery model of ICMR. It is used to transport COVID-19 vaccine. Currently it is being implemented in Manipur, Nahaland and Andaman and Nicobar Islands. Fifth important thing is agriculture. See it is used by farmers for spraying pesticide. This helps in saving money, time and reduces exposure to pesticides. Apart from this, it also finds use in commercial and motion picture film making. So based on this, MCA asked Ministry of Information and Broadcasting to use drones for high quality videography. This will be cost effective as the current helicopter based videography is expensive. See these are only some of drones applications and since it could be used in all sectors, Indian government is aiming to make India a global hub for drones probably by 2030. So for this many steps and initiative have been rolled out by government. First of all, liberalized drone rule 2021 was launched in August 2020. See it classifies the drones into nano, micro, small, medium and large. Here in this image you can see which drones are classified as nano, micro, small, medium and large under the rules. Apart from this, under the rules, interactive drone airspace map is also developed. See this map provides with green, yellow and red zones. What is this green, yellow and red zone? 
see no permission required for operating drones in green zone so green zone implies that for operation of drone in this region does not require any permission but in yellow zone permission of air traffic control authority is required and this red zone is the no drone zone within which drones can be operated only by central government's permission see make note of these changes since drone sector is a booming sector in india there might be questions in this area now coming back under this 2021 rule only digital sky platform was also developed see digital sky platform is a user friendly one online single window system hosted by the directorate general of civil aviation then in september 2021 under atmanirbhar bharat the production linked incentive which is nothing but the pli scheme for drones and drone components was launched under the scheme incentives of rupees 120 crore will be given in the next 3 years so this will facilitate over 5000 rupees crore investment over the next 3 years this in turn will boost the drone manufacturing industry now according to government estimates it may grow into a 900 crore rupees industry in financial year 2023 to 24 so this will generate over 10000 direct jobs in 3 years so these are all the things which you have to know about drones in this discussion we saw about drones its applications and efforts taken by indian government with respect to drones so with these learned points now let us move on to the next news article discussion look at this news article this article is taken from the text and context page see this news article is with reference to the five global nuclear powers who pledged on monday that is on 3rd of january 2022 to prevent nuclear conflict the five nations includes china russia us uk and france so in this context we'll learn about npt its current status and issues surrounding npt we will also discuss the solution to address the issues the syllabus relevant to this article is highlighted here for your reference kindly go through it see npt corresponds to treaty on the non proliferation of nuclear weapons which came into force in 1970 see the npt is the only binding commitment in a multilateral treaty to the goal of disarmament by the nuclear weapon states See as of now a total of 191 states have joined the treaty including the five nuclear weapon states just remember India is one of the four non signatories countries which includes Israel Pakistan and South Sudan note that North Korea signed the treaty but withdraw later see NPT is a landmark international treaty whose objectives are threefold first thing is to prevent the spread of nuclear weapons and weapon technology second thing is to promote cooperation in the peaceful use of nuclear energy and the third important objective of the treaty is to achieve complete nuclear disarmament see this may look easy on the paper but that is not the real case because the treaty mentions what to do and why to do regarding nuclear disarmament but how they are going to do is the real challenge see nuclear competition among nuclear weaponed states could encourage the non nuclear weaponed states to acquire their own nuclear weapon therefore an ideal way to solve this would be to abandon all nuclear stockpiles by nuclear powered states but this is not happening see the ideal way which i mentioned just now might be a more practical option which worked for a long time but now it appears to be fading in today's world what seems to be practical is to pursue nuclear deterrence among major powers and provide non nuclear states with a nuclear umbrella for those who are not aware nuclear deterrence is a military doctrine according to which the possibility that a country will use the nuclear weapons it possesses in retaliation will deter an enemy from attacking so to summarize abandoning all nuclear stockpiles by nuclear powered states might be an ideal way to achieve complete nuclear disarmament but the argument here is in today's world 
this ideal way might be a practical option before but now this concept is fading and what is more practical is to pursue nuclear deterrence among major powers and provide non nuclear states with a nuclear umbrella we'll see why see the first case is regarding the dominant rise of china and its debt trapping tactics see china gives concessional loans to the low and middle income countries for key infrastructure projects we know that of course but these poor countries are often unable to keep up with the repayment to china so what china do here is china demands concessions or advantages that has led these countries to come under china's sphere of geographical influence China with this advantage goes on with building military bases and ports in the low income countries to increase its dominance. See this has made the countries to wonder if they need to acquire or develop strategic capabilities to safeguard their security. So this is the first case. The second case is regarding with Australia and its AUKUS that is AUKUS. See AUKUS or AUKUS is nothing but a new trilateral security partnership between australia uk and the us for the indo pacific region see through acus australia will acquire nuclear power submarines from us and uk to counter china in the indo pacific region so this is the second case the third case is that outstanding of the p5 nations See India and Pakistan are known to possess nuclear weaponry and Israel is also strongly suspected of possessing it so apart from P5 countries here the P5 countries corresponds to China France Russia the UK and US so apart from these P5 countries non P5 countries like India Pakistan and Israel possess nuclear weapons here all the countries are major powers and specifically talking about p5 countries they have permanent membership in unsc and all five possess nuclear weapons and the fourth case is that the north korea has a nuclear weapons program but its actual possession of nuclear weapons is still debated see in recent times north korea conducted multiple missile tests to showcase its supported capabilities It has a total of seven major types of long-range missiles. It ranges from a limit of thousand five hundred kilometer to thirteen thousand kilometer. Here, an important point to note is: see, though the nuclear-powered countries issued the joint statement regarding nuclear disarmament, the reality is completely different. Just look the table regarding the stockpile of nuclear weapons by these P5 countries. If you can see, Russia has six thousand two fifty seven stockpiles. US has five thousand six hundred stockpiles. You can see that in the table given here. See, this does not end here. Even outside the P5 countries, Pakistan possesses about one sixty five, and India possesses about one sixty nuclear weapons. Also, Israel and North Korea either possesses or have enough fissile materials to build ninety and forty five weapons, respectively. The world's stockpile peaked during the 1980s and started to reduce considerably up until 2005. Since then, most of the reduction has come from the disarmament of the retired stockpile. Development in technologies also means that the world keeps seeing new ways to deploy these nuclear weapons, which is another worrying trend. You can look at this map. for learning about the stockpiles of nuclear weapons by all these countries see why we are discussing these cases this is because we are talking about npt and the cases we discussed actually weakens npt this is because the countries are trying to acquire nuclear weapons and not trying to abandon it just for an example take australia many nations would work together developing or acquiring nuclear weapons this could reignite another arms race right but the p5's joint statement what it mentions is to prevent nuclear war and avoiding arms races see this emphasizes non offensive nuclear weapons usage while still agreeing to the npt 
what it exactly means is even though they given out and joint statement this will not stop the use of nuclear weapons against conventional weapons if the particular nation feels its security to be threatened so on one hand they try to achieve nuclear disarmament but on the other hand they justify the use of nuclear weaponry so after analyzing these factors we can conclude that npt is neither successful nor failure and the success of npt largely depends on the p5 nations especially china so it is the moral duty on the part of p5 nations to strictly adhere to the npt they should even wider the commitment through its action towards putting an end to the arms race and hopefully complete disarmament so this is all we have to know from this news article in this article we have learnt about npt five nuclear power states and their goal of complete disarmament we have also discussed about the case of china australia and stockpiling of weapons by these countries finally we have concluded by saying that the success of the npt largely depends on the p5 countries who should strictly adhere to npt that's all regarding this article now we'll move on to the next news article discussion now have a look at this news article see this news article talks about the enhancement of the incentive for the aggregated social health activist who is nothing but asha workers by the telangana state government see the state government has enhanced the monthly performance based incentive for the asha workers by 30% which is effective from june 1 and payable in july so in this context let us learn about asha workers in detail see one of the key components of the national rural health mission is to provide every village in the country with a trained female community health activist who are called asha or aggregated social health activist see aggregated social health activist or the female community health activist selected from the community itself and trained note that these asha workers are accountable to the community from where they are selected see the asha workers they come under the ministry of health and family welfare make note of this important point they come under ministry of health and family welfare now what will these asha workers actually do see the asha workers will be trained to work as an interface between the community and the public health system at present there are over 9 lakh ashas and the scheme is presently in place in 33 states and union territories except goa chandigarh and puducherry now let us see the selection process of asha workers see there are four important criteria for selection Firstly the asha must primarily be a woman resident of the village who may be married widow or divorced and preferably in the age group of 25 to 45 years Secondly the asha workers should have effective communication skills leadership qualities and be able to reach out to the community Third and most importantly she should be a literate woman with formal education up to 8th standard see this criteria may be relaxed only if no suitable person with this qualification is available and lastly adequate representation from disadvantaged population groups should be ensured to serve such groups better now just have a look at these important norms which talks about the composition of the asha workers now let us see some important rules and responsibilities of ashas See the first role is to create awareness on health determinants such as nutrition basic sanitation and hygienic practices etc so this is the first point to note their main role is to create awareness second role is to counsel women on birth preparedness breastfeeding and also on complementary feedings apart from this they can counsel women on immunization contraception and prevention of common infections including reproductive tract infection or sexually transmitted infections etc so the second important role is to counsel the women third role is to mobilize the community and facilitate them in accessing health and health related services available at the village or sub center or primary health centers such as 
immunization, antenatal and postnatal checkup, sanitation, etc. So third important role is to mobilize the community and facilitate them in accessing health and health related services. Fourthly, she is important to inform about the births and deaths in her village and any unusual health problems or disease breakouts in the community to the sub-center or primary health centers. And lastly, she is responsible in promoting for the construction of household toilets under total sanitation campaign. See, make note of these points. You can use them as value addition in your main sensor writing. I have given you few more roles and responsibilities of ASHA workers with example here. Just go through it. So that's all about this news article. In this discussion, we saw about ASHA workers, their selection process and composition and lastly we saw about their major roles and responsibilities. With these learned points, now let us move on to the next news article discussion. Look at this article. This is with reference to the cabinet nod for ropeway and a 5 star hotel at Jog Falls. So in this context, we'll discuss about Jog Falls in prelims perspective. See, Jog Falls is the second highest plong waterfall in India located in Sahar Taluk in Shivamoga district. They are also known as the Jergopa Falls. See, just now I mentioned that Jog Falls is the second highest plong waterfall in India. Then what is the first, then which is the first one? See, the Nokalikai Falls in Mehalaya is the highest plong waterfall in India. Now coming back, Jog Falls is normally a segmented waterfall but depending on rain and season, it becomes a plong waterfall. See segmented waterfall or waterfalls where water finds more than one course along its downhill journey. While plung waterfalls or nothing but the waterfalls that drop vertically without touching the underlying cliff face. Here the underlying cliff face is usually a vertical wall that is, this waterfall drops directly down without steaming on the rocks. Here the image of both the segmented waterfall and plong waterfall are given. I believe you can appreciate the difference here. So these are the basic definitions which we should know. Now coming back, see the Jog waterfalls are a major tourist attraction and is ranked 13 in the world by the waterfall database. See during monsoons one can see a breathtaking view of the falls with rainbows coming every now and then. It is one of the nature's splendid masterpiece and is situated in the dense evergreen forest. See the effect of these striking falls is enhanced by the wild and beautiful region around it and just remember the region is covered with plenty of abundant vegetation. Now talking about formation of jog falls See the Jog Falls is formed by the sub Saravati River. The river originates at Amburtita in Tirtahalli Taluk which flows northwest towards the western Ghats forming the Jog Falls before joining the Arabian Sea at Honavar. See it's visually striking experience when Saravati River flows from a height of nearly 820 feet as jog falls into deep gorges in four distinct segments namely the Raja, the Roarer, the Rocket and the Rani. Each segment is given its name in a thought to reflect its character. Look at the map to see the segments from north to south it is Raja, Roar, Rocket and Rani. So now we'll see some of the important places near the jog falls. First one is the Hone Maradu Island. See, this island is situated on the backwaters of river Saravati. It is a famous holiday destination. And the second one is Lingan Maki Dam, which is famous for water sports. It was built in 1964 across the Saravati River. This dam, which is located around 6 kilometers from Jog Falls, forms the reservoir for the Mahatma Gandhi Hydroelectric Power Unit. So because of this, Jog Falls are seen as a source of cheap electricity production as well. So that's all regarding Jog Falls. Now we'll move on to the next news article discussion. Now look at this news article. This news article talks about the inauguration of India's first open rock museum on the CSIR National Geophysical Research Institute's campus. 
See, this museum consists of 46 different types of rocks displayed in a garden with their economic and scientific descriptions. See, these rocks have been sourced from Odisha, Tamil Nadu, Uttarakhand, Jharkhand, Jammu and Kashmir and others. So, in this context, let us discuss about the Council of Scientific and Industrial Research which is abbreviated as CSIR. See, CSIR is a contemporary research and development organization which is known for its knowledge base in diverse science and tech areas. As a proof to this, in the year 2019, CSIR published 5009 papers in SEI journals with an average impact factor per paper of 3.714. See this SEI journal is a non-profit organization. When you talk about the presence of the CSIR, it has a pan-India presence with a dynamic network of 37 national laboratories, 39 outreach centers, 3 innovation complexes and 5 units. So through this pan-India presence, the CSIR covers a wide spectrum of science and technology that is from oceanography, geophysics, chemicals, drugs, genomics, biotechnology and nanotechnology to mining, aeronautics, instrumentation, environmental engineering and information technology. Thus, it provides significant technological intervention in many areas concerning societal efforts which include environment, health, drinking water, food, housing, energy, farm and non-farm sectors. Further, CSIR plays a noteworthy role in science and tech, human resource development as well. Now let us see the key roles of the CSIR. See, CSIR is a pioneer of India's intellectual property movement. So it is strengthening its patent portfolio to carve out global niche for the country in select technology domains. Note that the CSIR filed about 225 Indian patents and 250 foreign patents per year during 2015 to 20 and CSIR is ranked 37th among 1,587 government institutions worldwide. And according to the Schemago Institutions World Ranking Report of 2021, the CSIR is the only Indian organization among the top 100 global government institutions. Also note that CSIR holds the 7th rank in Asia and leads the country at the first position. Now let us see the vision and mission of CSIR. CSIR's mission is to build a new CSIR for a new India. Its vision is to pursue science which strive for global impact, also to pursue the technology that enables innovation driven industry and thereby nurturing transdisciplinary leadership. So this in turn will catalyze inclusive economic development for the people of India. See make note of these points very important for prelims and mains answer writing. Finally, the CSIR has operationalized desired mechanisms to boost entrepreneurship which could lead to enhanced creation and commercialization of radical and disruptive innovations underpinning the development of new economic sectors. So that's all about the news article. Very important article with respect to prelims. Make note of this. You can use these points in value addition as well. Especially in science and tech questions, you can use these valid points. So with these learned points, now let us move on to the next news article discussion. Have a look at this news article. The news article talks about the successful testing of a hypersonic missile by North Korea. See, this was the second reported test of hypersonic gliding missile of North Korea. The first was Hwasung 8, which was tested on September last year. But as per this year, this is the first major weapons test by the nuclear armed nation. So in this context, let us see in detail about hypersonic missiles, which is a type of cruise missile. First, let us brush up some basics about missile. See, missile is a rocket propelled weapon designed to deliver an explosive warhead with greater accuracy at high speed. See, there are five types of missiles, namely air to air, air to surface, surface to air, anti-ship and anti-tank. I have given you the image of classification of missiles. Just go through it. Now let us have a brief understanding about strategic missiles. See strategic missiles or weapons designed to strike 
targets far beyond the battle area see they are of uh, two types the cruise type or ballistic type talking about cruise missiles see the cruise missiles are jet propelled throughout their flight while ballistic missiles are rocket powered only in the initial or boost phase of flight after which they follow an arc arcing trajectory to the target here you can see the key characteristics of ballistic and cruise missile see the cruise missiles are further classified based on the speed as subsonic supersonic and hypersonic cruise missiles some examples of cruise missiles in india is given here just have a look at it now what is a hypersonic cruise missile see they are missiles which travel at speeds 5 times greater than the speed of sound see the minimum speed should be more than mach 5 or 3800 miles an hour see this might be slower than an intercontinental ballistic missile but the shape of an hypersonic glide vehicle allows it to maneuver towards a target or away from defenses see when a glide vehicle is combined with a missile it can partially launch it into orbit called fractional orbital bombardment system which is nothing but fobs see this could remove all the covers made by adversaries of reaction time and traditional defenses mechanisms at present there are two types of hypersonic systems called boost glide and scramjets talking about hypersonic boost glide see the hypersonic boost glide is boosted by ballistic missiles to a particular level and then they glide towards the target while scramjets use a conventional rocket to accelerate the missile fast enough that the scramjet can take over and then the target is approached in a scramjet engine the air or oxygen taken from atmosphere is mixed with fuel and ignited the air flow here remains supersonic so far we saw about what is a cruise missile and what is a hypersonic cruise missile we saw two types of hypersonic systems as well now we'll have a brief look of india's efforts on this hypersonic technology see india is undertaking hypersonic research through the defense ministries the drdo and another private sector agency called brahmos aerospace which is a joint venture with masco for example in a recent test by drdo the cruise vehicle was mounted on an agni 1 solid rocket motor to take it to the required altitude see the drdo's prototype is known as the hst dv or hypersonic technology demonstrator vehicle and brahmos aerospace is known to be developing the brahmos 2 as well as i already said brahmos 2 which is a hypersonic cruise missile is currently under development its expected operational range is 300 km and the speed is mach 7 for the future drdo and brahmos aerospace are probably developing missiles which can carry a warhead of around 1 ton to a distance of around 500 to 750 km just remember these missiles are expected to travel with a maximum speed in the range of 6 to 7.5 mac that's all about the article so we had discussed about cruise missile and hypersonic cruise missile also we saw the position of india in this hypersonic technology which is very important for both prelims and mains preparation so with this we came to the end of the news article discussion now let us move on to the next part of the news article discussion which is nothing but the preliminary practice questions now look at this first question this question is about drone rules 2021 which we discussed in our news article discussion consider the following statements with reference to drone rules 2021 statement 1 red zone is the no drone zone within which drones cannot be operated statement 2 remote pilot license is not required for all nano drones and micro drones for non commercial use Statement 3 the rules do not apply to an unmanned aircraft system belonging to the naval military or air forces of the union of india which of the statements given above is or are incorrect so you have to find the incorrect statements here option a one only option b one and two only option c two only and option d two and three only c statement 1 is incorrect because in red zone drones can be operated but only with the permission of central government 
it is not a no drawn zone so statement 1 is incorrect so through elimination method you can eliminate option c and d now coming to the statement 2 statement 2 is correct see here remote pilot license means the license issued by directory general to any individual for operating drone no individual other than a holder of a valid remote pilot license enlisted on the digital sky platform shall operate an unmanned aircraft system but it is not required for all nano drones and micro drones for non-commercial use so statement 2 is correct now moving on to the statement 3 this statement is also correct because the rules does not apply to naval military or air forces of the union of india so here the correct option is option a one only because the question asks for incorrect statement now moving on to the second question consider the following statements with reference to the asha workers statement one the asha will work as an interface between the community and the public health system statement two there should be five ashas per thousand population in all the areas of india statement three a asha can be a man or a woman which of the statements given above is or are incorrect option a 2 and 3 only option b 1 only option c 1 and 3 only and option d 1 2 and 3 see the correct answer here is option a now look at this first statement see asha workers they act as a interface between community and the public health system so statement 1 is correct if you can identify statement 1 is correct you can easily eliminate options b c and d and you can directly arrive at the answer option a 2 and 3 only now just for our confirmation let us see about statement 2 and 3 see both the statements are incorrect statement 2 is incorrect because there should be one asha per thousand population but in tribal hilly desert areas the norm could be relaxed to one asha per habitat depending on workload statement 3 is incorrect because asha must primarily be a woman resident of the village who may be married widow or divorced and preferably in the age group of 25 to 45 years so the correct answer here is option a 2 and 3 only now moving on to the third question consider the following statements with reference to the roles and responsibilities of asha workers statement 1 she cannot provide primary medical care for minor alignments such as diarrhea fever and first aid for minor injuries statement 2 she informs the birds and deaths in her village to the sub centers or primary health center statement 3 she is provided with a drug kit statement 4 she is responsible in promoting for the construction of household toilets and the toilet sanitation campaign statement 5 she counsels women on prevention of common infection including reproductive tract infections which of the statements given above is or are correct option a 2 and 3 only option b 2 3 4 and 5 option c 1 2 4 and 5 and option d 1 and 5 see look at this first statement the statement is incorrect because asha workers they can provide primary health care for minor alignments such as diarrhea fever and first aid for minor injuries so now look at the options given below you can eliminate two options that is c and d now you are all left with only two options see if you just know whether statement four or five is correct you can directly arrive at the answer now let's take statement five she counsels women on prevention of common infections including reproductive tract infections see this statement is correct because we saw this statement in our discussion so our answer here will be option b 2 3 4 and 5 now moving on to the fourth question which of the following statement regarding jog falls is correct option a it is the highest plung waterfall in india option b jog falls is formed by the tungabhadra river option c hone maradu island a famous tourist destination is located near the falls option d both b and c see the correct option here is option c now look at option a we saw in our discussion that jog falls is the second highest plung waterfall and we also saw that jog falls is formed by saravati river not tungabhadra river so both a and b are wrong which makes option d also wrong so the only left option is option c the correct answer is option c 
Now look at this question. This question is about cruise missile. In the context of speed of cruise missiles, which of the following pairs is or or incorrectly matched? Statement 1 subsonic around 0.8 max speed. Statement 2 supersonic around 2 to 3 max speed. Statement 3 hypersonic less than 5 max. Select the correct answer from the code given below. Option A 3 only, Option B 2 and 3 only, Option C 1 and 3 only and Option D 1, 2 and 3. See the third pair is incorrect because hypersonic is not less than 5 mag, it is more than 5 mag. We saw that in our discussion, right? Apart from this, know that subsonic is around 0.8 mag speed and supersonic is around 2 to 3 mag speed. So here the incorrect pair is statement 3. So the correct answer is option A, 3 only because the question asks for incorrectly matched pair. Now moving on to our final question with reference to Council of Scientific and Industrial Research that is CSIR consider the following statements. Statement 1, it is a pioneer of India's intellectual property movement. Statement 2, it is present only in the national capital Delhi. Which of the statements given above is or are correct? Option A 1 only, Option B 2 only, Option C 1 and 2 only, Option C both 1 and 2, Option D neither 1 nor 2. See the correct answer here is option A. Now look at this first statement. In our discussion itself we saw that CSIR is the pioneer of India's intellectual property movement. So the first statement is actually correct. Now coming to the second statement. It says that it is present only on national capital Delhi. See this statement is incorrect. As we saw in our discussion, CSIR has pan India presence meaning it is present in different parts of the country. So the correct answer here is option A, one only. Mains question is displayed here. Please go through it, write an answer and post it in the comment section. With this, we came to the end of the news article discussion. If you like the video, like, comment and share and do subscribe to Shankarai's Academy YouTube channel. Thank you.